All right, music fans, welcome back. It is the Real Music Observer observing real music in real time for real people just like you right there. Right there. Me here. Uh, doing an indoor video. Got too many dang distractions outside today. Um, living... All I can tell you, folks, is I'm living amongst the Beverly Hillbillies, okay? That's all I'm going to say. Uh... Hey, who's winning the public relations war in the band Journey? Now, six months ago, now stay with me, I was of the opinion that there was one guy in Journey who was causing all of the problems. Uh, I have since moved from that position uh, somewhere almost like 60 or 70% in the opposite direction. Uh, the reason I say this is because if you look at Journey as a band, you look at the characteristics of the band and how it's made up, you've got original members, both, uh, at this point, it's Ross, Valerie, and Neil Sean. All right? Ross, Valerie appears to be on Team Kane. Uh, Neil Sean has recruited Dean Castronovo back into the fold, which also makes me think that Steve Smith is also on Team Kane. Now, some of this is just a deduction. This isn't uh, them calling me up and saying, hey, this is what we believe and, uh, you know, and just go with the video on it. No, this is me kind of coming to a conclusion about Journey. Uh, if you look at all of the bands right now booking summer concerts, uh, I think if this were Neil Sean's uh, boat to drive or whatever, uh, these concert dates and gigs would have been set up by now. Uh, they'd be rehearsing. They'd be doing some things which would make you think that they were about to go on a really important summer tour. Uh, every day, new announcements uh, come through. We had Steely Dan and the Doobie Brothers, I think, yesterday. Uh, again, part of that whole Irv Azoff cluster of classic bands that went out on the road last summer. Uh, as far as Neil Sean goes, though, he has a benefit concert coming up on February 9th, and that appears to be a big event for a lot of Journey faithful. Uh, if you go on Twitter, if you go on Facebook, people are really pumped up by that. All right, six months ago, when this whole White House visit thing happened and Arnell goes and uh, the Twitter back and forth. Now again, for the record, I haven't really recovered from the Twitter back and forth. Uh, that one is still kind of an issue for me. Uh, I would have loved to have seen the guys just sit around a table, have a couple of beers, and say, you know what, let's just agree to disagree, and let's just not let any of this stuff get in the way of who we are, our brand, our image, all of that good stuff. That's what I would have done. All right, very simple to fix that. But as time has gone on, I've seen and noticed a few things. First of all, during the Journey tour last summer, uh, Jonathan Cain was up in his hotel room composing, writing, and getting his Christmas album together. Okay? Hotel room, whatever, in between, going back home, doing what he needed to do to get that album done. I gotta tell you, that's a rough go. I know bands, you know, I just watched the Chicago documentary and how they used to write a lot of their songs for albums in hotel rooms, but they were playing their music and then they were going back and they were inspired by the music they had written and they'd go back and write new songs uh, for you know their upcoming album of course these guys were really young uh, you know a lot of energy a lot of testosterone they they just you know they were living on top of the world at that point uh, these guys are a bit older and i think they have to be a little more methodical in what they're thinking and doing and i'm not a real big fan of the two priorities here you've got a lot of concert goers that aren't looking for a concert to be mailed in I had one gentleman over on Facebook tell me uh, he spent four hundred and fifty dollars last summer for a mailed in concert I told you when they wrap things up uh, it was very perfunctory it was very going through the motions ish uh, there is a lack of team chemistry going on and it's not just the guy playing the guitar, okay? You've got to have everybody on board with the vision. 
You can't have a drummer that is just there to pick up a paycheck. Just saying, okay? These are all my observations. You can disagree. You can refute them. Again, YouTube is a free platform. Just upload away. Same thing with Facebook and Twitter. I'll be there to talk to you if you'd like to discuss these things with me. Uh, but as time has gone on, it seems one guy is really pumped about journey music, whether that's the classic old journey music or maybe music during the Steve Perry era, okay? Which a lot of folks are pretty pumped up about. They're excited to know that Dean Castronovo is going to be singing at this benefit concert. That gives you a full-throated tenor who can handle all of the Perry material and do it justice. And, you know, the icing on the cake is Greg Raleigh is going to be there. And, you know, Greg Raleigh's stock has gone up a lot. Uh, if you've seen him out on the road with Ringo, Ringo Starr, for those of you who didn't know who I was talking about, which would be kind of silly. Uh, he sounds great. He plays great. He looks good for his age. He's up there. He's doing good stuff. And to have him, Neil, and Dino, and then you bring Marco Mendoza in and John Varn in, and you've got a super band. Now, that's exciting. Now, it was a Journey Summer Tour with Arnell singing lead, John playing the keyboards, Ross playing bass, and Steve uh, playing for you know, a few extra bucks on drums. Is that an exciting event for you? That's been the concert now for a number of years. It's getting kind of old and repetitive. There's no new music out there for them to play and promote. Uh, this, the set list gets a little bit redundant. We've heard Don't Stop Believin'. Uh, it's a great song, but it would be cool to hear some things uh, going way back, and that's what this benefit concert is going to do. So as I look out on Twitter and Facebook and social media, what I'm seeing is excitement about this concert, about the prospects of songs being done that haven't been played in years. This is exciting. The prospect of another journey, sort of going through the motions, mailing it in summer tour, not so much. It could still happen. No announcements, by the way, have been made yet, which is a little bit weird. But I still believe that it'll be Def Leppard and Journey at some point. I'm just wondering if management is sitting on this because of this inner tension and strife that still remains in the band. And I think Jonathan Kane, I think he would do himself a favor if he would start talking about Journey again, uh, rather than his uh, Christian preaching and his solo album and his Christmas album and... You know, I get it. You know, you're a rock star. I get it. Your your faith is very important to you, as is mine. But this is a music channel. He's in a band called Journey. I talk about music a lot more than I talk about religion, although I do bring it in when it's appropriate. Uh, I'd like to see a balance back in this whole situation. We shall see. But the bottom line is Neil Sean is winning the public relations war and it was a brilliant move for him to say hey we're gonna do a benefit concert for fire victims and we're gonna assemble this all-star band that can tackle anything that journey's ever done wow that's what I'm talking about folks it's a winner all right that's my video I'm Dave this is the real music observer inside the house the hillbillies are outside and I'm inside I will see you very soon talk to you then